the Letting restaurant us. recommendations, yeah. the shooting, all of it. Yeah, but that's right. Back. Joe Harris, one of the, the, the veterans of, of this Brooklyn Nets experiment, is, is <laughs> with us now. <laughs> Joe, it's good to have you back, man. I'm glad to be back. Good to see yeah, you guys, yeah, too. Good to see you. So before we get to restaurants, and, and we know you've been helping Royce <laughs> out there since his move, how about health? How, how are you feeling right now? Are you full go? Any limitations? Where are you at? I'm full go. I've been full go for probably the last month or so. Um, no problems whatsoever with my ankle. Um, it's more just the rest of my body kind of getting reacclimated to playing, um, you know, sitting out. Basically, my, my first full basketball, um, even individual workout was November of last year. So um, even incorporating the individual stuff and now finally playing, you know, it's taking a little bit of time for my, the rest of my body to adjust to everything that's going on. And Joe, a lot of layers and complicated, I'm sure, even more so than all of us know on your end, thinking about last season and, and what you went through in terms of trying to get yourself back on the court, yeah. knowing that then you wouldn't. Can you walk us through it a little bit, just the way in which you experienced it, what it was like for you? Yeah, I, um, I mean, the initial injury that I had in OKC, um, you know, there's uh, a lot going on in the ankle. Um, and, you know, instead of having, you know, a bigger procedure that would have ended my season, um, it was kind of to a collective decision to try and figure out how I could try and come back play um, at some point in time. You know, we weren't sure if it was going to be a month, uh, you know, maybe even longer than that. But we were kind of willing to, you know, run uh, run the risk of just, all right, we'll see see what happens. And uh, at some point in time, if you need to do a bigger procedure, we'll do that. Um, but unfortunately, I just couldn't get myself uh, back to a point where I could actually compete um, you know, I could go through some different shooting workouts, stuff like that, but I couldn't compete in an actual NBA game. You know, the ankle was just so limiting where I had to have the bigger procedure done. And, you know, it was obviously unfortunate just given the time, situation, circumstances of everything. But now coming back healthy and being able to play for the last month or so, I mean, I had to have it done because, uh, you know, it's night and day the difference for how I feel now versus, you know, how I was feeling last November. Weren't you even, I mean, Joe, it seemed like like you were there was a point where you're like hey if I can just even stand out there and catch and shoot I mean the things you were trying to get on the floor it was unbelievable yeah that, that you weren't giving up and you just kept pressing trying to get on the floor yeah I mean I was pretty determined to try and get back and I really thought it was going to happen um, even if it was in a limited capacity you know I we were rolling up the idea of me just wearing a pretty absurd uh, ankle brace that was more <laughs> along the lines of a cast um, and you know I could have probably spotted up and, and shot a little bit but uh, the problem was turning around and going on the other end, <laughs> yeah. trying to chase people around and guard somebody. Um, it was a little bit out of the cards. And, uh, yeah, it was tough. It was, it was definitely, um, uh, you know, it was a growing and humbling experience for sure. And I think, uh, you know, looking back on it too, you know, you, you certainly take for granted just the time that you're able to compete, be out on the court, play, even just do all the little stuff. Mm. And so all that was taken away for, for a little bit of, of time. And I have this, you know, sort of rejuvenated spirit just back, like being able to, to play the game. I almost feel like a little kid again. We'll look forward to next season in just a second. We've taken you back to last season, uh, but this off season, you've been a part of this organization, the longest tenured uh, to this point, and it, uh, many iterations of what this group with the slider roster has looked like. What was it like for you uh, experiencing this summer when Kevin asked for the trade and yeah. just wondering what this group, what this team may look like as you get set to come yeah, back. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of question marks and, you know, that's just, that's kind of the NBA though now. I feel like a little bit where there is a lot of uncertainty every offseason and it's not necessarily with guys even requesting trades or anything like that. You know, there's just a lot of moving parts. I mean, you look at Utah blowing it up, other organizations making moves. Everybody's trying to put themselves in the best position to compete for a championship and, you know, our situation might have been a little bit abnormal, but at the same time, you know we are here now everybody's together and i think there is this collective spirit like this is this is what we got and this is how we're going to push forward how hard was turning that page joe um probably harder for uh some other guys you know yeah. I, I don't know i think it's definitely a question for kevin and front office coaching staff but for the guys that are here you know i've been here all summer and you know i've been really focused on my rehab um coming in uh doing the work that i need to do every day and that's been the same for you know 10 11 guys on this roster coming in and being in the facility on a daily basis this, this off season so uh you know this is you know that, that's more, I think, for yes. those guys to kind of, 
you know, worry about, hash out amongst themselves. But again, this is not an uncommon thing in the NBA. I think ours is just, you know, a little bit more public than everyone else's. What about for your coach, Joe, Steve Nash, who's, you know, whether the report was true or not, there was a report at one point that Kevin asked for him not to be here. Well, he is still here. Yeah. So is Kevin. How difficult or not difficult do you think it will be for Steve to be the guy leading this group, getting through what he went through as well this summer? Well, I think, you know, anytime that, you know, you don't meet expectations, you're not playing as well as you thought, you know, it can get a little tumultuous. You know, we're all super competitive here and everybody really wants to win. So things didn't end, obviously, how we all expected them to last season. I mean, we had high expectations, even given all of the injuries, the trades, um, COVID stuff, whatever it might have been, there were still high expectations. And when you don't meet them, you know, there's a little angst there. You know, you're kind of just sitting on it all off season. But again, I think it was definitely one of these things where it's just something that was made a little bit more public than it needed to be. Because I'm sure that a lot of this is not foreign territory for a lot of NBA organizations or you know, professional organizations for that matter. You know, this is a competitive group where you're just, you're trying to get the most out of one another. You're challenging each other and ours is a little bit more public, but you know, we're together now. And I think, uh, you know, the ex adversity that we've sort of experienced, um, whether it's the last two seasons, now this off season and everything that's happened are hopefully a good starting point for us to kind of just, you know, <laughs> go into something great, you know? You'd like to think that yeah. because the things, when you mentioned sitting on things and just the competitive nature of so many of these players and you could look down this roster and whether you want to say chips on the shoulder, or motivated, um, everyone individually and collectively has a lot going yeah. into this year. What excites you when you do look at this roster and the well, I think, opportunity, yeah. what excites it's you hundred. It's exactly that. You know, you look across the board where there's a lot of guys that got something to prove. This organization organization has something to prove, um, you know, and it's not just the guys that are out, like myself, Ben, TJ has been out, Ed, Edmund Summer has been out. Um, you know, I think you just, you, you look at guys even that were playing last year that didn't, we didn't accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. And then you add new guys to the fold that, you know, they, they want to, you know, we're all here to win a championship. And, you know, regardless of what has transpired and has happened, that's still the goal at hand here. And that's something that we believe, I think, that we we can achieve and I think you could go and ask every single person on this roster and we would all echo the same thing you know obviously it's a huge undertaking a big task and there's a lot of stuff that's got to come together between now and even through the preseason for us to even start building this foundation to get there but this is the challenge that everybody you know I feel like when your foot uh, your feet are in the fire a little bit guys have a tendency to go one of two ways so you know it's up to us to decide which way we're going to go and you know hopefully it's the right direction and go Going towards that championship aspiration. Looking at the roster and Joe and, and thinking about Ben and how he fits into you guys, especially with all the shooting you have, yourself included now back healthy. What do you envision for, for Ben and the way he's going to influence this team? Uh, ben is an incredible player. Um, and just the pace that he plays with, uh, how great of a passer he is. Um, you know, he creates a lot of offense without you know, really having to score himself. He makes the game so much easier for everybody that he plays with. And you've seen that through his entire career. You know, there's guys that really thrive off of playing with him. And I think our roster is going to be no different. I think he is the perfect piece for, um, you know, the guys that we have around him. You and Seth ever have shooting contests? <laughs> no, we haven't. He's uh, his re his rehab stuff has been uh, a little bit longer going. We're kind of at different times of when we come in, but you know I've seen him over here uh, shooting around a lot this summer, and uh, yeah, he uh, is easily one of the best shooters on the planet. Yeah. Uh, put yourself in there. We <laughs> have to adjust our boards often of who all-time career yeah, three-point exactly. percentage right. between we got, you two. We got right? a few it's top five guys to the on the hundreds. same roster. It, it is unbelievable. So, Joe, what was the, the first restaurant you gave Royce to have to go hit in Brooklyn? Because he said you've been helping him out a lot. Yeah. Well, I sent him just a list of stuff to hit in uh, where, he, where he's at, so okay. where he lives, the neighborhood he's in. I kind of I gave him, I threw him a few spots okay. over there to stay um, kind of convenient for the neighborhood. Okay. And then once he, you know, hits those and start branching out throughout Brooklyn. You have a whole game plan for Oh, him. yeah, I got a game plan for him, for it's sure. It's long-term, yeah. long-term. Slowly yeah. move north is, amongst the boroughs. Is the like headband it. coming back this year? Uh, the headband, I think, might be uh, on the shelf for a little bit. Wow. Depends on the, the status of the hair. So I got a <laughs> sh little bit shorter hair right now. I don't necessarily need the headband. Um, but if I let it keep going, I'm definitely going to have to incorporate the headband What about in. the fist pump? 
Fist pump, hopefully we'll be back. Nice. I got to make some threes for that nice. dad. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, we Joe, like just want to end on this. Sarah talked about you being the longest tenured member of this organization. I think for a lot of fans who saw this team come from the ashes of the Celtics trade and build up to the title contender we saw two seasons ago against yeah. Milwaukee, you are the face of their hope, right? You yeah. were a player who was given up on, came in, and made himself in incredible, indispensable part of a, of a championship caliber team. What ownership do you feel right now for the group, being that you're kind of the guy who's been here yeah. and, and you guys are, are still striving towards that goal ultimately? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously I'm not going to, you know, put too much directly on myself because this is it's about everybody. And, um, you know, you, you try to do stuff the right way. And, you know, I think everybody across the board, every person on this roster should try to lead by example. And I'm no different in that aspect where, you know, I try to embody what, you know, the Brooklyn Nets were all about when I first got here. You know, being a guy that's, you know, focused on the, 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 the smaller details. You know, I'm not a liability in the locker room where you have to worry about me, um, you know, complaining, uh, causing like a negative stir around there. Um, you know, I, I think you you look at the rosters that we've had over the years, it's obviously changed a lot. Um, but one thing that has remained pretty consistent has been the characters and the intangible of the guys that really do try to embody, uh, embody those smaller details that help make the big things happen. And I think this this roster, more so maybe than the last couple of years, I think collectively kind of fits that, that mold where we got a lot of guys that have – you know, I don't know if self-awareness is the right uh, term for it, but a lot of guys that just like know their role on a winning basketball team, and I think that that's a really indispensable factor when you think about championship teams. And you know, you look at some of the better NBA teams over the last several years. You have to have guys that understand, you know, what it takes to win. You obviously need championship-level talent, which I think you know we we certainly have, and we have top-tier talent in the league. But a lot of it is everybody else around you too and you need to have these indispensable guys that you know they they're bought into their role they know what they need to do in order to help the team win and I think we have a lot of those guys right now which you know makes me very optimistic about the season Joe we always love seeing you hearing from you so happy to have you back healthy and can't wait to see that fist pump on the floor I no, appreciate you guys Thanks, All right, thank that's you Joe Harris joining us live from Nets Media Day and we're gonna